So today's project is starting with a painting. We're just using acrylic paint on a black canvas and I prefer to use Liquitex basic paints. Those are my favorite go-to paints. So I am just using an old bristle brush. It's a little bit bent out of shape and I am just laying color down. I start with white to get a light source and now I am adding in some greens. This is going to be the backside of the trees and just a base for leaves and foliage and tree color. Now I am adding in the trunks. I am using a medium sized flat brush. And I am just literally just took a dark color. I think this is just a brown with some black mixed in. And I am just laying in bits and pieces of tree trunks and branches. Um, just kind of like the middle part of the tree that you can see. And then after I get all my little um, pieces of trunks and branches laid in there, I will add on some colors, sort of the forefront of the tree that you can see. And I'm just gonna use that same old beat up bristly, bristle brush, sorry about that, tongue tied, that same old beat up bristle brush to add the foliage and leaves and bright colors that will go in the front. I am using the same color as the tree trunks and the same brush, the same medium flat brush to lay down a base color for my path. It is just a dark brown with some black mixed in and a flat brush. On top of that, I will add onto it some uh, raw sienna, just like an orangish brown color. And then on top of that, I will add a tan color. It's just brown and white mixed. It's not full white. It is a light brown tan color to give it some highlights and some shimmer, like the sun's hitting the pathway in some spots. Now let's add some pretty shimmering autumn colors to our trees. Like I said, I'm using that old beat up bristle brush and I'm just dabbing it in. I'm leaving a lot of gaps and open spots where you can still see the background color and some dark colors and some greens because that's how it looks um, to your eye in real life. You will absolutely still see a lot of that dark and that background. There's lots of gaps in trees. There's lots of variations of where your leaves fall. So you got to kind of vary it. So this is it done. And now I'm going to add some foliage and some bushes and some brush down along my path. And I'm just laying down some base color now. It's just a brown, kind of the same brown that I used in the path. It's an orangish brown. And I'm just gonna kind of get the lay of the land laid in there. Okay, so moving on to my favorite part. I'm going to add in some foreground trees, some trees with some details. I love painting trees. It is therapeutic to me. I could go on for days just painting little twigs and sticks and details and it's just, I don't know, I enjoy it. It's one of my favorite parts of painting. So I'm just putting in a couple of these to kind of push the background back into the background and to bring some more detail to this painting. Mm -hmm. 
Now don't forget when you're walking through the woods that there's all kinds of little small twigs and sticks and and little things growing out everywhere. Just little small things. So don't forget to add those to your painting. You know, you need a bunch of little twigs and wiry things sticking up everywhere because that's what true life looks like. I also wanted to point out that when I'm making these branches, I am using a liner brush and I am making my paint very, very thin watery, almost just the consistency of water. And I am just wiggling and twisting the paintbrush so that it looks more natural because a lot of sticks and twigs are very bumpy and very twisty. And so you have to kind of give that perception when you're painting. So just twist your hand, your fingers and wiggle the paintbrush and it makes a much more lifelike looking tree. So just for an added extra little fun detail, I am just barely dabbing on some metallic gold paint just kind of to hit a shimmer on top of my little bushes and in a few places on my trees just to, just to give it some pop. Okay, so now let's get to the clay. So I am doing what I call a clay cutout. Um, I will cover this entire canvas in clay in pieces, in sheets as big as I can make them and then just kind of, you know, combine the sheets and smooth them out so there's no seams or anything. And then when I have a full sheet of clay across my canvas, I'm going to use this leaf shape that I roughly drew and I'm going to cut it out. Now, when you see that I get done cutting out my leaf shape, I will go back in and I'm going to actually make it bigger because I wanted to show more of the painting scene. Um, it wasn't quite as much of the painted scene that I wanted, so I definitely went in and increased the size of the leaf cut out. And I'm glad I did. I think it worked out good. As a matter of fact, if I was to do it again, I would probably even go even bigger than that next time. Just uh, really, really show the, the progress we did with the painting. So the clay that I'm using is Super Sculpey Beige and I rolled it out on in my pasta machine to like the third setting and um, 
you are more than welcome to use colored clay. I just like to use a Super Sculpey just because um, I like adding the colors that I want. And you can still add color even with the colored clay. It actually takes a step out um, for you. You just have to add, you know, detail colors instead of coloring a base color to start with. But it's a lot more cost effective to buy the Super Sculpey by the pound than it is to buy colored clay by the pound. So um, this is just a better alternative for me to be able to save some money and, you know, still get the same effect. Okay, so I baked the painting and I let it cool and now I'm going to add a base color to the clay part. I am just starting with this uh, rust brown color and then I'm going to blend in some black all around. I'm just trying to get a real base color, just a real fall look to it. I wanted to mention that before I baked the painting I had cut out some more clay pieces in leaf shapes all around the clay cut out just to give little peekaboo shots of my painting underneath. So once my base colors were dried I am taking these Art Deco metallic paints and I'm just adding a little bit of different golds and coppers all around. I actually put a little bit more paint on there than I really needed. I had to kind of um, wipe some off the brush as I was trying to blend the colors together, but I wanted to get a good coat of metallic paints. I really wanted this to look bright and shiny and very fall colors and it looks really cool to me. I'm really happy with the way it came out. So once my metallic paints are dry, I am adding these clay flowers. Now I don't have the footage for the flowers because I do have it in an upcoming video. So make sure you look for that so you can see how all these really pretty fall colored flowers are made. And um, I just added, I just glued them down with some tacky glue. Um, on top of the clay cut out i just felt like it needed a little bit more you know me i am not less is more i am more is more and i am so happy with how this came out i am having so much fun with experimenting and playing with these clay cutouts and 3d painting with clay paintings and i hope you're enjoying these videos if you are come join me for the next one <music>